Kobe, are you convinced that it, they told us probable torn Achilles? They're going to do an MRI. Are you pretty convinced that's what it is? Yeah, I can't walk. You know, I try to maybe just put pressure on my heel, see if I could do it that way. But there's just nothing there. But if anyone's going to get through this, probably you, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, shit. Maybe I should break out the rocking chair and reminisce on the career that was. Maybe this is how my book ends. I don't know if I can do this. Dude, wow. Achilles were like the kiss of death. Yes. Athletes. I went in the trainer's room, my kids are in there, and you know, they're looking at you and stuff, and I'm looking at them, and I'm like, you know, it's all right, dad's gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. It'll be fine, it'll be all right. As a parent, you gotta set the example. This, this is another obstacle. This obstacle cannot define me. It's not gonna cripple me. It's not gonna be responsible for me stepping away for the game that I love. I'm gonna step away on my own terms. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Nav, and today is the 10 year anniversary since the late, great Kobe Bryant tore his Achilles tendon against the Golden State Warriors. Today, we'll be paying homage to Kobe and the Mamba mentality by breaking down this injury. We'll discuss the anatomy, the biomechanics, why this injury might have occurred, the surgery, and the recovery process. I've sprinkled in some Mamba mentality along the way just to infuse that mindset into anybody who's watching this video. Let's talk about the Achilles tendon, also known as the calcaneal tendon. Here is the tibia or the shin bone. The tendon connects the calf muscles, also known as the gastrocnemius and soleus to the calcaneus or the heel bone. It is the strongest and thickest tendon in the human body. The tendon and the calf muscles work together to enable a person not only to play basketball, but also perform everyday activities such as jumping, running, and climbing stairs. Whenever the foot is pointed upwards, we call that dorsiflexion, which stretches and lengthens the calf muscle and the Achilles tendon. When the toes are pointed downward with the calves flexed, we call that plantar flexion. In athletes, there's two very common mechanisms that lead to an Achilles tendon rupture. The most common is the push-off mechanism we'll be talking about today, where the foot is in dorsiflexion and you push off, leading to that tendon tear. The second is a landing injury, landing from a jump or from heights, which can cause extreme dorsiflexion. It's one of the reasons why you might have heard someone say, don't land on your feet flat-footed. Now let's break down Kobe's injury. As we run this clip, you'll see he has his back to the defender, Harrison Barnes. Kobe will commit to dribbling to his left side. To initiate this movement, we see him plant his left foot here. If we pause for a second, you'll see his foot is in a dorsiflexed position. Notice the left tibia or shin bone pointing towards the ground while his foot is planted. This puts a significant load or stretch on the back of his leg on his Achilles tendon. So this tendon is being eccentrically loaded, AKA lengthened as it contracts. Kind of like when you stretch resistance bands out. And then as he goes to push off of that left foot, you'll actually see the tendon ultimately look like it snaps or see this sort of pop right there. Kobe himself said, As soon as I made the move, I knew it. A common question is what is this pop that we're seeing? All of these injuries here have nearly identical mechanisms. Bottom right is Kevin Durant's injury in 2019. If you look at all of these images, you'll see that the athletes plant their foot and load the Achilles. The feet are dorsiflexed. And then when they push off, you can see the pop. The reason we see this sort of snap or pop is because our tendons are elastic. That means that they store elastic energy and whenever they're cut or if they tear, there's a release of that energy causing it to reflect back up to its insertional site. This is because when the tendon snaps, the calf muscle no longer has a tension on it. So the actual movement that we see is the release of tension from the tendon snapping, which reverberates up into the calf muscle, sending a sort of shock wave through the back of the leg. You'll notice right after the pop, look at Kobe's face. He felt that thing pop and almost instantaneously that led to severe pain. And the first giveaway that he's ruptured that Achilles is on the next step with that left foot. Notice he's not able to push off or bounce off that left foot at all. And he literally goes straight down to the ground. One interesting thing that we see 
is right as Kobe goes down, he grabs his Achilles tendon with his hand, puts his other hand on the tibia, and you'll see him take his foot from a dorsiflex position and attempt to point his toes down and flex that calf muscle into plantar flexion. That's the motion your calf muscles and your Achilles complex are supposed to be doing. It looks like he's trying to activate those muscles and push it down. And the unfortunate part of this injury is you'll be unable to perform this motion without the Achilles tendon intact. Kobe's longtime athletic trainer, Gary Vitti, recently confirmed this. Then he says to me, so I reach back there and try to pull it back down. No one's ever said that to me. <laughs> Kobe says right after he goes down. Yeah, I felt like I got kicked. And here you can see him ask Harrison Barnes, did you kick my leg? And you actually see Barnes, a rookie at the time, saying something along the lines of, I didn't kick you. This is a pathognomonic sign of a classic Achilles rupture. The most telltale sign of an Achilles tendon rupture is when an athlete says, it felt like somebody kicked, kicked me in the yeah. back of my leg. Let's review the mechanism of this injury in one go. Kobe initiates going left. We see him plant his foot here in a dorsiflex position with the left tibia pointing towards the ground. This puts a significant eccentric load or stretch on the Achilles tendon. And then as he goes to push off, the tendon snaps, leading to the pop. On the next step with the left foot, he's unable to push off at all and goes straight down to the ground. He then grabs his leg, tries to activate the full Achilles complex, which would allow for dorsiflexion to plantar flexion, but is unable to do so. This leads to the pathognomonic clinical sign of feeling like you were kicked in the back of your leg. The fastest way to test for an Achilles tendon rupture is the Thompson's test, which includes laying someone flat and squeezing their calf muscle while they're relaxed. If you observe plantar flexion during the squeeze, the Achilles is intact. If there's been a complete rupture, the plantar flexion will be absent as shown here. An ultrasound or an MRI are also used to confirm this diagnosis. So why did this injury occur? Do you feel that all the minutes you've been playing may have contributed to this? It's more than likely that Kobe had chronic micro injuries to this tendon over the course of the last couple weeks. Leading up to this game, Kobe had played 47 minutes in four out of the last six games. He played at least 40 minutes 30 times in this season, which is more than the past two seasons combined. Many believe that this injury was a key precursor to the evolution of the load management era. For context, LeBron James has played an average of 35 minutes per game in the last four seasons, and Steph Curry has played an average of 32 minutes per game the last four years. That's it for the video today, guys. I really hope you guys found this useful. If you did, huge thumbs up. Make sure you click the subscribe button. If you see me in a fight with a bear, pray for the bear. I've always loved that quote. That's Mamba mentality. We don't quit. We don't cower, we don't run, we endure and conquer.